guys, uh, welcome back. Um, what we're gonna do today is uh, we're gonna go through a little bit of a random man setup. Um, I got here a four models, or one model that's been copied four times, and I'm just gonna walk you through quickly the uh, materials that I did for this uh, um, setup. I think you got um, four material here. You got plastic, glass, and metal, and the uh, surface scattering. I'm not crazy happy about surface scattering. But I'm um, just gonna go through quickly and then um, show you roughly an idea how uh, I set that up very quickly. Um, we uh, it's, this is not an in-depth uh, tutorial on how to do texturing and how to do uh, shading properly. I would possibly need to do something, but something that probably you will you will see uh, during the uh, second semester, the second year, uh, when we see uh, digital practice. So I normally like to go a little bit more in depth on how to lay a material and create complex material like metal with layers and car paints and, and things like that. But at the moment I just kind of show you how to uh, render out the um, uh, basic single layer materials like a, just a PX, uh, PXR uh, surface material here, this one, was just with a single setup. Um, in this case we're going to go through uh, these four materials. And then, like I said, later on, I will probably create another tutorial for the next year when we do this. So, um, okay, let's go through this quickly. So, I'm gonna have here just gonna have this uh, uh, material here. This, at the moment, I have this geometry, and um, what I did was obviously you you know all this already. You got this, and the first thing that I did was I took the, the model backing and I scaled it up, and then. Uh, by the way, I will give you this to, uh, this uh, file, guys, so you can play around with it and then have a look how this probably done, but. And obviously, we will cover this in class. Now, uh, I think the only thing that I did here was the end render man. I added a subdivision scheme, so it's smoothed out. So you go here, this the cut and run subdivision scheme. So it means that if I press three, and it's, it will give me the same effect, but um, now with this uh, attribute, it will only happen in re it will only happen in render time. So we don't have to do it. It's good when you have something that is fairly complex, and you press number three. Sometimes you get an error, an error or a warning saying. Uh, it's too many polygons you can't really subdivide in the viewport. So in order to avoid that and then having things uh, smoothed out in, in rendering time, we just uh, add this uh, uh, attribute here to the actual shape node of the uh, geometry. And that will be taken care of. Uh, the other thing as well I did was obviously I assigned uh, the uh, metal. I think this one was the chrome material. Uh, don't worry about this, it's just because every every time you apply a texture to um, in, in um, in render man, uh, even if it's stiff, whatever, it will always be converted into a text file. So uh, that's what happens. It's always connected into a text file. So it, it will does every time you hit render for the first time, it will does it will do this and then put it in a folder, and then you don't have to do it again. So this is the moment give the warning that it hasn't been converted, but it will do it automatically. So anyway, here what I did was the uh, pixel surface, and then I apply one of the presets from here, and it was just a uh, chrome, I think it was. And all I did was I. Um, I did was I only uh, put uh, the roughness and I change the uh, I put a, a normal map inside the uh, specular. So if I click here, it picks a normal map, and I click here, then it will tell me I pump up this 1.1. I put my file here, which is the Jaguar. I think it's in here surface. Here, this guy here. There you go. That's the file there. It was all exported from ZBrush. I will show you how to do that as well class I think probably another module but it will it will complement with this and um, and then uh, I did nothing I think sometime for certain reason when you do this uh, let me show you here I think it's let me pump this down here like this I think sometimes for certain reason what you have to do is probably uh, flip this thing here flip uh, Y and Z especially sometimes you will see that in the line there is like a uh, the, the, the normal is going one direction and then the other ones opposite the seam goes in the other direction by Playing around with this too, you normally fix that issue. But now I'm gonna give a render to this. These settings here are fairly low, so I think I got them in. Let me go into the settings here, and I think the sampling I only got into 12, so I'm gonna put it to 128, so it give me less noise. And I'm gonna put let's put this to zero, all right. So um, I'm gonna do that, and then if I hit render, hit this button here, the first side will take a little bit less time. Uh, it will take a bit more time. It's because uh, you're doing the conversion that I told you about. And I think here where you have is uh, the metal material. This is a floor normally that comes with um, one of the presets well that comes with actually with a um, uh, render man. So what I did here was this. So um, I just put the, um, the 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 normal map and the uh, and I think I only I did this uh, setting here with the roughness and I'm gonna show you the, the texture in a minute. But what I want you to notice is this little black things here happening. 
And it's always depending on where you look at it, the angle you look at it. So you here, and I cancel this, and if I put it from this angle like that, and I hit render again, go here, now you can probably see it here, I think. This stuff here is an artifact that happens when you apply a normal map. And it pretty much what it is, just to talk it quickly, is that pretty much what it is, is that this is uh, when you have the normals, there's something called the geometric no uh, normals, the geometric normals, or the in implicit normals, and you have the um, the shading normals. And I think when you apply a normal map, it perturbs those uh, normals, and you need to compensate for that change, and that's why it happened this little black bit here that hasn't been uh, adjusted to. So if you if you want to fix that, all you have to do is go into here. There's an actual pixel um, um, a node for this, but in the normal map here, if you go into normal map here, it has that stuff built in, which is the adjust normal. So you pump this all the way to one, and then you render again. Now you should see that that artifact is gone. So you can see the black bits here, they're here and there. It's all gone now. So when you see that issue, you just have to wait to solve it. I think it might be here as well in the ears. I think it was earlier, probably. I think it's always it's always on the grazing angle, pretty much when things are um, looking at on the edge here, like the grazing angle, this bit here, and obviously there. So um, if you go there, you see it's all gone now. So you just have a way to fix it. So I'm gonna cancel this, and then the other thing that I did to this was I um, obviously the these. Uh, settings were done with the actual preset what I did was change the, uh, the uh, roughness here I don't think I play with any of this stuff around here this just went here and all I did was I checked this um, file I'm gonna show you this file one of the files on the internet is this JPEG here scratch a tileable scratch is JPEG and then all I did was in the uh, every time you create a file uh, no it creates this place to the texture which is actually the UVs and all I did I put the repeat two and two which means that it's gonna be smaller so it doesn't look that big so um I think obviously if you wanna change if you wanna check what it looks like you can probably go here into the file where's the file oh yeah no sorry the normal and then here you go the place to the texture if you put this to let's say uh, 0.5 and 0.5 so I'm pretty much literally scaling the scratches so if I do this and render and you can see now like the roughness is, um, is different now because the scratches are bigger so now I just pretty much scale up the, the uh, file by half by I'm pretty much making it double twice as big so the scratches are um, less or less um, there's less frequency in the noise here when you apply it to it so um, if you got that and then you pump this up to I think here I think you click here you see it's being big it's, I think it's bigger now so you put this to two I think if you leave it with one you can see how it's see I only scale it in the uh, U and you see how it's being stretched out here so that's probably how you want to look to do some let's see what it looks like actually like that stretch out so now you can probably see that they're gonna be some scratches in one direction so I think here you can start seeing them there. And it's being the scratches is being stretched out because I connected to the roughness. Just remember that the roughness is the one that showcases how rough a material is. It is it the color in this case is a number from zero to one. But if you interpret a color, or in this case, black and white, zero to be in dark and white towards the, the lightest part, then you will have the same representation here, one to one in terms of the numbers. So what you have here is. Um, if I put this back two and two, so pretty much what it's doing is giving a, a number here to tell me that this texture is going to be applied here twice as big. You see how the pattern now is smaller? And I think in the color balance as well, I checked, I don't think I tweaked any of the colors here. I think it worked right out of the bat there. So if I render now, you will probably see how the scratches will be way smaller now. And obviously at the moment you cannot see it much because it's all combined now, but obviously it's, it's the information is there, it's just to make it look more interesting, more worn out metal. If you don't put that, it will look too too perfect. But I think if I break it, so if I took here and then I just go, just break this connection and just give you a render, you will see that everything, obviously at the moment, because it's too, the number is too high towards one, then everything is so smooth that it loses the specularity, you see? If I put it towards zero, you start getting it sharp. So if you put it like 0.2, and then I render, then you will see that everything looks sort of rough, but it's very uniform. You compare this with this, this is way more interesting because you go 
uh, not this one, this one, than this, because it's too uniform. This one will give you more of a you know different story to the character or the, or the metal, the material that has. It's being worn out, it's being bashed, so it's not just pristine. And it breaks out that CG look. And I think if I probably undo this and going back to the connection that we had here, there you go. So now it's connected. So this one here breaks it up. You see how the highlight is a bit broken up, so it's more realistic. So that's all what I did to this metal material here. So I'm just gonna go here. And I'm uh, just gonna hide this, and I'm just gonna probably show the glass. And the glass is right at the bat, how it comes from from the preset. So I took here, and I think I apply in one of the settings here the clear glass. And I, all I did was I did nothing here. All I did was I changed the refraction color, so it looks a little bit bluish. So if you render, you get uh, this. So you get pretty much this. So it's it's just glass. It's been rendered out. It's been refracted. The thing that has been refracted here is because the uh, obviously the image that I have in the background, which is as well as a preset, so I think it's been refracted. And the, the, the thing is that the shadow is, you know, it's being cast. The, the the color of the glass is being cast into the shadow, so it looks more realistic. So, so that's it, really. I did nothing to this guy, so I'm just gonna go into here. I'm just gonna show that metal is on, plastic. If I check plastic here, let's see what we got. Let me render this out. And plastic, what it is? It's just a single color. And it just got, I think, a roughness map, and it just uh, looks a bit more interesting. It's just, I broke up the highlight here, so it doesn't look that perfect. So this is just sort of mimicking, sort of painted, like like a paint coat or something that you would paint, like a metal can or something like that, that will have that look like that. But it's a bit too rough at the moment. But it's something just for showcasing how to um, uh, put stuff together and render it with passes inside Render Man. I'm just going to um, keep it with this simple... Um, set up so I think if you go here and then analyze this material and you go into attributes here and all I, all what I did was I changed the color here just a single color I could have put something here some sort of um, I could just go here and then put and connect the color I think I could put one of the ones from from actually from my other account with it probably uh, let me put a 2d texture here probably we can put I don't know a noise the noise will give me this so when I render it will have that noise into the actual color which is actually horrible so I can change the frequency and stuff but I think I liked it the way it was so I'm just gonna undo this and I'm just gonna back the way it was so I keep it in red like that so okay it's fine so the primary specularity here all I did again I put the um, I put the specularity I put the bump, uh, normal map in the actual advanced section of the diffuse component so the same one and I did the same for the normal so it breaks it out and all I did was I connected a texture to the um, to the roughness okay so I do this and the roughness is pretty much this image it's an image called grime I put here grime and that's just that and again all I did was I repeated it here with a place to there I put it twice twice so now you can see that it's being repeated you can see the pattern here happening so it's one two three four it means that it's been repeated twice so um, I think that's it for this and then all I did was I changed play around with this and I take this thing here alpha is luminance and the reason for that is that when you place a texture inside um, um, uh, render man you go to auctions you go either to use the pixel texture which is the uh, node that comes with pixel to placing a texture there or you can use the file node which is the one that comes with Maya so the problem is that when you use the one that comes with from Maya because this is roughness and it's, you remember the, the one I told you that when you see a color here it means that you need a, uh, uh, you're gonna connect three channels red green and blue to the actual component when you have a number without this little color here it means that you only need a channel in that case it could be red green blue or alpha but the problem with alpha is that because I use here a JPEG, just remember what I told you in class, that JPEGs don't have alpha. They only got red, green, and blue. So what it does, it creates a pseudo alpha. And that alpha is created primordially from here, from the alpha. And the alpha is said, when you take this box, alpha is luminance. If you take this box, you mean you're telling, you're telling uh, uh, Maya and Renderman that the actual, um, the actual uh, alpha, black and white image that you need, because it's a number, is going to be computed from the luminance taking the red, green, and blue channel. Okay? And the reason for that is because I'm not using here the Pixar file, PXR texture, which is, for example, if I, is, I'm using the file here. So if I take, for example, here and I click here just to test it, you see you got the option to use in the file from Maya, which is built in, or from Renderman, you can use the Pixar texture here. Okay, somewhere around here. So what's that? So Pixar texture, where are you? 
somewhere here. Pixel, this is P texture, right? Something here called pixel texture here somewhere. And that, what it does is just connects automatically the alpha or one of the channels. You can connect a channel. But when you do it through Maya with a file, which is exactly, it works, it's 100% trans, uh, translated by Redman, it does connect the alpha from the luminance automatically. So you have to create that, that actual um, connection because he, he knows that, uh, the system knows that you're only connecting something that needs one channel, not three, like with the little color here. So if you go here, and if you select this guy, and then you just go here into the editor, and then you just graph it here, you can see that the plastic final, it has the JPEG, and the, it needs, because it's, no, it's clever enough to know that I connected to the specular roughness, which is a single channel, it needs here a single channel, so it doesn't know that it can connect it from the red, green, and blue, it just automatically connect it from the alpha. But because it's a JPEG, it doesn't have an alpha, all you have to do is internally compute the alpha by ticking this box, alpha is luminance, and then automatically pretty much adds red, green, and blue, and then put it, put it into a black and white. But this, I think the, the, the luminance, um, um, the luminance algorithm is a little bit more um, take t it's a bit more work than just uh, equal amounts of red, green, and blue. I think it's 20% uh, of red, 30% uh, of blue, and something like that. Because it's depend. I think it's based on how the eye, the human eye, perceive color. So there is a little. If you go to Google and I, the luminance al uh, luminance uh, formula, and they will tell you roughly what it is. So. That's why I take that thing, that book, because it's a JPEG, I don't have an alpha, and then it would say, if I were here at TIFF, and you know that it has an alpha, then you, you don't need to take this, because you automatically know it will take the alpha channel from here. So JPEGs, you can create an alpha channel by doing the combination, ticking this book, alpha is limited. So you can do that as well, so just to let you know. So I got that, and then plastic here, I did the roughness, normal map, normal map, so it breaks, voila, it renders, that's all it is, okay? So here, surface scattering, this is a bit tricky because I haven't played around much with surface scattering with this, apart from when I did the skin, but we just write the box because I just change everything now with the pixel surface. I haven't got my head to start working on that. Before it was an actual um, material, which is pixel skin, that was dedicated just for skin, so it was pretty straightforward. But with this, it's more like a um, sort of monolithic um, empirical approach to um, 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 uh, a cheddar, pretty much one cheddar, that's all. You don't have to create different shades. So this one here, they change things around. So I haven't played around with it. So what I did was I just changed some quickly settings there, just to give me that impression that make it look like it's light passing through a medium. So you see, it looks like it's a bit waxy. So you can see, here, especially here in the ears, when you with this renders a bit more, you will see when you render out that it looks waxy. It looks like it's light passing through the actual skin. So the reason it's redder here is because the surface color is red, and because this ear is thinner, then it will be more transparent. Okay, and you can see as well when you can see people in the ears and the nose when the light passing through, when the light is in the background, you can see they look translucent. And that's because the light is passing through because the the, the, the skin is very it's very thin. So this one is the same here. So obviously you don't see it much as here over the pores or anything, but you mostly see it here in the ear, which is the thinner part and the nose as well, even the, the eyes here. So that's just something for you to see that we can produce a surface scattering. So I put all of them together. So if you're making all visible, then you can just probably from this angle like this, and you can probably give you a render, and um, and that will give you um, a basic render of all components you get. So you get you got the glass, you got the plastic, you got the surface cutter, you got the metal. Again, this is very simple. Um, there is more to do when it comes to shading. This is just a simple stuff, just two or three. But you can layer these materials and create really cool, interesting materials. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop this now here. Just as an introduction of um, what the setting I did that for the for this um, file, I think this project I'm gonna upload in the VLE, so you will have a guys to play with, and the, obviously you're gonna follow with this in class when we do this this stuff in class. I just wanted to have this so you can follow up after after class, and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to export how to break down this image into all the components, into the specular components, the diffuse components, and the refraction and surface component separately so you can re, um, re um, rearranging or reassemble the image all together inside uh, Nuke with a note, the, the, the shuffle node or you can just tweak individual components within a, um, a uh, an image without having to just go and, and, and re-render stuff separately so you can put all that together in one go so and then as well what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about mat ID so we can produce mat for one for every single one of the elements so you can individually tweak them as you need 
So if you want to, if I want this image here, if I want to tweak just the metallic stuff, it would be quite difficult because um, this stuff got metallic uh, sort of reflection as well. So I need to isolate this guy. So how can I isolate that with a mat ID? And I show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, so you can see here that this scratches here, this this metal here looks far more interesting if we didn't have any any stuff here. The, the same happened here. You see how the highlights broken out, so it looks more realistic. Okay, so okay, guys, um, thank you very much, and then I'm gonna stop it right now, and then um, I'm gonna move on to the next class in a minute. Thank you very much. Right, bye bye.